is Jamie here keeping it coy welcome back to the channel and if you're new welcome hope to earn your subscription today so in today's video I've finished all the pipe work finally and there's a bit more water in the pond you'll see that in a second and we are putting in the UV bulb into the UV which is in there so uh, without further ado I'll spin you around and we'll take a look so I've just lifted their uh, cover off so uh, they're all a little bit skittish and spooked every time I lift the cover up but as soon as I throw in a handful of their favourite food all their spookness goes away and then I'm not going to I wouldn't believe that six months ago well even less than that about five and a half months ago most of them fish in there was less than an inch long uh, some of the really bigger ones like this this fella down here he's what I'd say a good 20 centimeters so probably about eight nine inches yeah. Got some absolutely crackers in there the biggest one out of those fry this one here, Mr. Benthead, lovely Ochiba, the scalation pattern on him is fantastic, but uh, as you just saw then, and as I've said many a times in previous videos, this little guy here, he's got a Benthead, so he's certainly the biggest fry out of that group, look at the patterning on that there, absolutely stunning fish. Just a shame. That, that Soragoy looking fella there used to be my diamond uh, zigzag or Chiba. But uh, all his pattern has now dropped away. So, hoping it will come back, but if not, he'll make an absolutely stunning Soragoy. I mean, his scalation pattern on his body is just fantastic. So, I'm going to keep that one for a little while, that's for sure. Just in case his pattern comes back. Alright. Well, let's have a look at the pond. We're only about two and a half to three foot now from the top. The inlet. You can't really even see it. It's down there somewhere. Look. We've gone up another eight or nine inches of water. Just enough room now to fit the window in here. Just uh, wanted to fill it up as much as I can to stretch the liner into place so I can uh, make sure it's as least crinkled as possible to get the window in, which I need to pull that end up just a tad. But uh, yeah, at least that side's pretty damn straight. No crinkles in that side or won't be when it's full of water and I stretch it out to where it needs to be. That corner still needs adjusting but I'll sort that out. Obviously as you saw in the previous video the UV is all in. So you've got the pump down there, coming up to 245s on there, up through the UV and back down on the 90. And then returning, if I can get me on the pipe, returning out down there. Got my airline attached. I've actually attached that airline down there and then into the back of the drum. That was fun. <laughs> Trying to get the airline in the back of the drum. I thought I really didn't want to have to pull the drum out just to, uh, just to get that airline in. But I managed it in the end. So uh, that's just attached to that in a minute. And then once I've put the... Uh, the pump up here I'll cut that where I need it and then one line obviously will go for the bottom drain and one line will go to the uh, to the drum so that's all good all my ball valves are all in um, now there wasn't any leaks last night hopefully as it's been all night now we will find out if there's any leaks at all but yeah the two uh, pipes coming out so that one's coming that's the one from the UV and obviously this is the one coming from the tip out the back I've chucked a bit 
bit of the rubbish again behind there for now. And I've got my ball valve. Loosen that off a little bit now so I can twist that with one hand. Look, nice and easy. Well, not nice and easy, but at least I can uh, twist it with one hand. And then I've got my flexi hoses going down there. One's drooped over and into the pond. That's uh, going to be for the shower at the when I uh, move it. And then, as you can see now, I've got my ball valve down there so there's no water in this pipe at the minute because the ball valve is closed if we can get around there it's getting a tight fit now with all these pipes here i am going to bury these so that'll be fine but yeah that's all in and it still looks like we've got no leaks but let's have a closer inspection if i push this down like that so we can get you guys in there as well because I can't see underneath these pipes anyway. So let's have a look. No leaks on that one. No leaks on that one. None on that one. And on the 90. No, none at the back there. And the wood looks bone dry as well. So I would say the uh, the front fascia. Oh, lost my angle. There we go. Yeah. Bone dry on that bit of wood. Look. So I'd say my uh, front fascia, uh, the flange for the tank connector, no leaks on that either. So we are all good here. Obviously there could still be leaks coming down that line and in the filter house because the, the water hasn't uh, got that far yet. But uh, yeah, we are looking good. But looking at the level of the water, I would say the water is now up to the uh, bottom drain I know the water is also in the air pipe as well at the minute because uh, I tried blowing through it the other day and I could feel it was all full of water uh, but once the pump goes on there obviously that will empty out but yeah no leaks on the airline no leaks on the bottom drain no leaks on the T and no leaks on any of this pipe work so so far so good for, for the first uh, as i said before i've built many a ponds before uh, but they've always been pump fed so i've never really worked with a uh, pressure pipe before but for a first timer and to have no leaks there's no water yet obviously in the skimmer line because the water is not high enough to go through the skimmer so that one will get tested later but just to uh see if there is any water currently in here i'm going to move them out of the way for a second i'm going to find somewhere to put you i'm going to see if there's any water up here bear with me i'll snap back to you in a second we ready three two one Hooray, we have water, look. Needs to be a lot higher to do a purge, but I was just checking, making sure that there is water up that high, because that gives me an idea that there's no leaks, at least on the bottom bits of pipe work, which is correct. So that's good. That's good. So, so far so good, and if I've done such a good job on all that bit of pipe work, hopefully the same goes for the rest of it, fingers crossed. But yeah, so we've all seen together that so far it's all working. So uh, yeah, all I need now is a hand moving the window into position. And that's it then, job done. Fill the rest up test the rest of the pipe work and turn everything on absolutely fantastic well chuffed with that so far pigeons are having a bit of a scrap on the shed roof god they're annoying these pigeons their poop is everywhere always and our Nala her favorite cuisine for some strange reason is bird poop god knows why but hey ho but yeah so uh still got animals ruining my uh, 
Japanese garden. We just come out this morning and uh, bring you around. Me mossy stuff, look, has been thrown in the pond that side and thrown in the pond that side. So, no more stones today have been moved by the look of it, but yeah, the watercress keeps getting all pulled about as well. So, I'm guessing that's just the birds, but who blimmin' knows? So, let's see if we can pull this moss back out. This bit. I believe was in here. And that bit, if I can step over there without falling in. There we go. It's on there. I know they like a lot of water, but I really don't think they want to be in the pond, do they? But yeah, looking good. I even found the uh, the other day found the Buddha floating in the pond and uh, it wasn't Nala so there is something that keeps uh, moving around stuff around the pond these guys have just been fed yeah, Mr. Komonryu there Mr. Jin Matsuba Mr. Rotten Tomato mm. Akamatsuba. Here comes Mr. Chagoy, look, that we lost the other day. Absolutely huge. You, you really can't tell how big they are in here. Oh, and there he is, look, Mr. Benny Kikikuri. My fish don't have names. I do think I should name them, but there's the new little Deutsch Shower. He's happy as Larry in there. These guys don't like me hanging over the pond with a phone in my hand. It's, uh, it's tough. Once they get in the main pond with a window, I'm sure they'll uh, liven up a bit. They will feed in front of me if I'm quiet and stood a foot or two back. But yeah, once I uh, take the cover off and stick the phone over, that's it. They all, all hide at the back. But yeah, garden's looking great still. If anyone can remember about three months ago, when I built that filter house and dug out the base for that, and obviously I'd only just really finished digging out the pond, um, the lawn was absolutely destroyed. Literally had no grass left on it down that side. And now look at it. Other than the odd burnt patch from the dog. There and there. The squirrels are currently leaving it alone at the minute. Makes a nice change. But yeah, almost back to golf course standards. Almost. <laughs> but yeah, I'm well happy with that. My tomato, my new tomato plant, doing really well. Got some flowers coming in there. Look, so I'm already getting tomatoes. My fruit trees are all doing really well. Lots of the little apples uh, are falling off this year. So don't know exactly what's wrong with that, but keep finding them all over the garden. Look. Down there. I don't know whether it's the squirrels, birds or whatever. My lemon tree, look at that. That is a big lemon. Big lemon. So that's good. Nothing on the orange trees yet, but my plum tree doing really good again. All them plums. Budlier bush hasn't flowered yet this year. I'm sure it will. We just need a a week or two of sunshine but it's lovely and sunny today and then it's back to rain again tomorrow strawberry plants unfortunately whatever was attacking them last year is back it's back so probably won't get a lot of strawberries again this year I'm gonna have to move them next year because it's starting to do my tits in it started not last year the year before I don't know if you can see that on some of the leaves they just get random holes at first I thought it was slugs or snails so I absolutely filled up all these trays with uh, slug pellets nope, something was still attacking them uh, someone said to me it might be white fly so uh, I kept my eye on it bought some uh, pesticide squirted them all, no, nope, still getting eaten and you'd have thought 
with the troughs full of slug pellets and the leaves all covered in pesticide then nothing would be touching them but unfortunately that is not the case I still don't know what is attacking my strawberries so uh, if they if that happens again this year then I will be taking them all out and moving them somewhere that I don't know got to do something with them because uh, this area is going to be my new pond anyway so. watercress is still going absolutely bananas look I mean, lilies are doing fantastic as well. There was a couple of flowers uh, coming up. Look, I don't know if you can see it down there. Little bud coming up. But I should, should have put that lily really in the uh, Japanese pond, Japanese garden. But because that's the main root of the lily, I want that somewhere in here. Whether I make a hanger like Vince does or whether I do something else, I think the step, even that, is going to be. Uh, too low down, I don't know. It's about, about four, four foot down, I think, from the step to the top. I don't know if that's too deep for lilies. I'll have to check. But got some lovely log slices off uh, Facebook. Ash. Going to make something nice with them. Hopefully. Don't know what yet, but I will make something nice with them. So, yeah, that's where I'm up to. Obviously, all the pipe works... Uh, all done uh, just need to put a roof on the filter house but that's going to be the last job because I'm in and out of there more uh, and I'll get the UV bulb in uh, later today so I'll snap back to you when I've got the UV out right guys so that's the ball valves all unscrewed um, so quick tip for uh, koi fish johnny buddy because like like myself you've got very little room to uh, to play with your uv if you need to take it off buddy close both your ball valves so I'll shut all them off i'm not going to do it now no point but shut all your ball valves off unscrew the side nearest the uv and then loosen the screws that side and the other side and then you should just be able to lift it straight out voila so I'm going to take the UV out, change the bulb, and pop it back in. So uh, rather than drill a hole in the side of the filter house, as I've got a ball valve each side of it, that is what I'm going to do to change the UV bulbs. So uh, I'm going to go get the uh, UV bulb and the quartz tube and set it all up ready to go. Snap back in a sec. Right, so uh, I've got my uh, O-rings out. I've got my ones for the quartz sleeve and the end cap flat washers. So uh, they come packaged separately uh, in the box. Got the box there as well because the UV bulb and quartz tube is still in there. So first job, we need to take the ends off the UV. So I'm going to set you down and show you what we're doing. Right, so first job we need to put in washer number one. So I'm gonna unscrew the hole of this. There you go, you've got your electrics in there, I don't know if you can see that look. Uh, and in this bit we need the quartz sleeve o-ring. And that will go around the quartz sleeve. I'm gonna get that out of the box in a second. So we've got one for this side and one for this side but I haven't yet unscrewed this side so bear with me and I'll get that side unscrewed well, that's both ends now unscrewed I've got my quartz sleeve out the box so that just slides here very carefully because they are fragile And then we just need to find it at the other side and ease it out of the hole. Like so. We then put O-ring around quartz sleeve. So it says. There we 
Okay, next one on. Now we do the same with the other end. I'll snap back to you in a second. Right, there we go, guys. I don't know if you can see that there. Look, but I've got the, uh, the O ring nice and tight up against the, uh, the plastic here. And the same with the other side. Look. So the quartz sleeve is now in. Now the quartz sleeve's in. We need to do the bulb mix. So what we need to do is unscrew the white bit from there and screw that into there because if he was just changing the bulb you wouldn't normally unscrew these so you want it semi tight Over tight the o-rings are pretty good on these so you don't want to over tighten it they're so easy to twist and turn, in my opinion, you're better off uh, just screwing them up, you know, firm but hand tight, not over tight. And then if you get a, a drip or two, you can literally just ah, give it a tweak and uh, that should sort that out for you. Right, so they're both in on both sides. Now we need the UV bulb. Now, one big tip I can give you with UV bulbs is do not touch the UV bulb. Um, I think everybody that's ever done this on camera has said the same thing, but I've seen lots of people do it different ways using gloves um, and all sorts, but I feel if you're using gloves, it's still going to give you the same end result that you shouldn't be touching the UV bulb. So I'll just adjust the camera ever so slightly and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. And all I'm going to do is, you can touch the uh, the metal ends, if I can focus it. You can touch the ends here, you just don't want to touch the glass tube. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to line the box up with that. And start pushing it through. Right, so I've pushed it through as far as I can with my hands and my fingers. And now what I'm going to do is, a little tiny cane from this end very carefully without damaging the uh, pins. Just going to try and push it through the rest of the way. Out the box. Obviously I know this isn't going to be possible for everybody if it's left in situ. This is the way I'm doing it. Not as far as the cane is going to push it because it's the driest, cleanest cane I've had. All right, there we go guys. I found a longer stick. Just pushed it through the rest of the way. Now we need the end cap washers. I'll open up this bag and we've got two end cap washers obviously one for one for either end right i'll sit on the edge of that plastic which will sit in there so if i can get that round that no specific way round let's see i don't know if you can see that there look oh, where's the camera there so the end washer now is sitting around the edge of that plastic. All we now need to do is get this plugged in here. It's not going in. Right, there we go. That's all now plugged in there. So we can tighten this one down. Making sure the rubber gasket stays where it should be like so and then we'll go do the other side as well so we'll pop you down that side Push the electrics through a tiny bit as I did before. Rubber gasket through there. So that rubber's now in there as well. Like that. And there. Uh, maybe that wasn't such a good idea screwing the other end in just yet. I thought it would keep the electrics in place. So there's a tip for you. It doesn't. So, 
there so I can put some pressure on it again without touching any of the bulb And now we will screw this end up as well, making sure the rubber gasket is where it should be. Lovely. Again, don't over tighten it. You can always, once the water's flowing through, if you see it through it, you can always just give it that little tweak. They're so easy to twist, but because of that, they're so easy to over tighten. Right, so that's that bit. Let's go put it back on. Right, so we're back in the filter house. I'll put it on the wide angle lens so you can see everything. Obviously, I've got a bit, bit of wood screwed in there with me screw on. And the same on that side here. Just that's where the uh, brackets sit. So just to show you that, oh, I haven't got enough room, but there you go. You can just see there that metal metal bracket under there with a keyhole fixing, and then that just lifts up onto them. So we'll move that airline out of the way. There we go. So. side and we're in so that's now hooked in place and then all we've got to do is re-screw these on Tight. Oh, like so. And that is job done. One UV bulb in there, ready to go. All I now need to do is connect up some electricery. And that should be good to go. So, uh, apologies for the uh, random motorbikes. But, uh, yeah. So that is the last bit of the build other than the window. So uh, yeah, anyone want to come and give me a hand, feel free. The sooner I get it in, the better. Right here. I would say there's what, about 7,000 litres in there so far, and probably another 4,000 odd to go. Is, uh, the pond with the pipework and the filters is going to be around 11,200 to 11,300. But uh, I've calculated the filters and uh, that malarkey, but I've not counted the uh, or worked out the pipework exactly yet. So I know it's going to be somewhere between 11,2 and 11,3. So that's all good. And all I've got left to do after the window goes in is put the uh, Put the copings on. Yeah, strawberries in here are doing well. It's, it's almost like half a greenhouse in here, so it's always about two or three degrees warmer under this pergola than it is out in the garden, which is why they're absolutely loving it, like basking in the sun. I leave it open now most days, um, so I don't have to worry about the heat during the day. Because uh, the heat, the heater is still on, just so they don't drop below 20 degrees at night. But to be honest, I don't even think they do that. And yeah, they're all looking uber fit and healthy. Right, guys. Well, that's uh, that's the UV all fully fitted, finished, bulb in, shebang, job done. Happy as Larry. Um, yeah. What's next? What's next? Might be able to show you a few more bits on the fry in the garden, but uh, 
next job now is window so I can fill the pond up so uh, if any of you lovely viewers out there that live anywhere near Peterborough want to give me a hand fitting this window drop me a comment in the box and we'll we'll arrange some it um, but yeah if not I see if my uh, dad might be able to give me a hand don't know don't know we'll ask but yeah if any if any of you lovely youtubers or just viewers want to come and give me a hand please please feel free you don't have to be on on the video i'm going to try and video fit in the window as much as i can but you don't have to be on camera but uh, yeah if you want to come give me a hand drop me a comment all right guys thank you all for watching massive thank you to all my subscribers so far we're doing so so well we're so close to a thousand um next big milestone which there will be a big giveaway uh, for the 1000 um, haven't quite decided what yet but there'll be a big giveaway so again thanks all for watching guys like the video give it a thumbs up share to all your friends and we will catch you all on the next one